We're from the Shawhegan Digital Magazine, so that it's cool. So, <laughs> cool. Tell the Claw, I'm Alex. Exclusive. Well, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Emily, I'm Julie. Hey, Seth. I'm Ben. Hey, Ben. Hannah. Hi, Hannah. All right. <laughs> Governor Bush, I'm a musician and I would love to go to music school when I'm older, but I do not have $65,000 a year to go to music school and I'm not uh, lower class enough to get the financial aid I need, yeah. but I'm not rich enough to pay for that. How, what are you going to do about that? Well, in Florida we have the lowest tuition of uh, for in-state students for public universities in the country. Without any federal government involvement, states can make a difference by in our case we have a bright future scholarship program and we have accountability around the school so we try to get students to graduate in four years for a four-year degree which saves a lot of money um, i'm going to unveil a plan next week that moves away from the student loans financing universities where in effect you would get a lump sum amount and in essence you would pay it back based on the income you make so over an extended period of time you would pay back what you what you what you in effect were given not borrowed you wouldn't there's no interest on this you would you would pay it back based on when you get a degree you're going to be a musician and you would make money and you would pay it back over a period of time that to me is a better approach because it forces the universities to lower the costs it shouldn't cost forty thousand dollars a year to to uh to go to school right right doesn't cost forty thousand they're making money off of that to pay for other things that the university does right that apparently is controversial for someone to say that, but it's the God's honest truth. So I think we need to move away from the model that effectively indebts young people, making it harder for them to start out in life. All right. Thank you. What's your what, 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 what music, what instrument do you play? I play uh, the piano and the trumpet, and I write a lot of music, too. Fantastic. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. My wife and I have a uh, scholarship program that we've done for the last 15 years. We have a competition for graduating seniors, oh, really? and we give out a... $2,000 scholarship wow. and um, kids are going to Juilliard and these other places wow. pretty amazing <laughs> that's awesome um, so my question is there's a lot of been a lot of talk in this campaign about um, threats coming from foreigners but I've noticed that there's been a lot of um, violence within our own country between uh, Sandy Hook and um, the Colorado shootings that have been going on I was wondering if you have a plan for approaching the violence that's been going on within America well, it's, it's different than, the, than people that are yeah. organizing to attack our country. Mm -hmm. Terrorism is something that we need to be vigilant about. But we do have, uh, appears to me at least, an increase in gun violence in ma most of the major urban areas. And then we have yeah. these tragic public you know, mass killings that uh, where people um, who are deranged do these things. I think the big issue is how do we identify people that have serious mental health challenges that are spiraling out of control to intervene before they commit suicide in many cases and certainly kill innocent people. Um, that's, that's the issue. That's the common denominator. The racist in Charleston was deranged. Yeah. The young boy that killed his mom and then killed innocent people in Sandy Hook was completely deranged. The kid in the community college was deranged. And yet no one really identified these mental health challenges until it was too late. And so I think that's, that should be the focus is at least it, figure out a way to make sure that they can't access guns and they can get treatment. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily, I'm a junior. And so I know that in a few years, I'm going to be going into a world that's um, pretty much, not necessarily, but kind of male dominated. Really? As, yeah. You think so? I do. I, I'm betting on you, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, I was wondering how you wanted to level the playing field between men and women and decrease the wage gap. Well, the wage gap is not based on like-kind wage. So if you're a lawyer, you're starting out, your wage, your wages will be the same as men. Um, and if you look at the, the uh, students going to law school, and I think even medical school, most of the schools, and graduate schools, there are more women than men. There are more women going to college than men. And so over the next 20 years, you're going to see the inverse of what you're describing is more and more women assume positions of responsibility they'll make more money so the question is how do you you know how do you make sure that everybody has access to opportunity uh, and I think women will 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 shine I don't think they're going to be pushed down the other element that that separates men from women is that you you know women bring children into the world and that's a 
uh, that brings joy to family and it's important for women and so you need to make sure you have workforce conditions where you're not pushed aside from your your professional career when you pause to have a child so you know family leave and all those other things I think it'll all be state driven but uh, businesses are going to have to attract quality women to make sure that they have the benefits and and um, the environment to be able to do both shouldn't have to be either or thank you All right, my man. <laughs> hi governor bush um you say that you'll be able to uh you say that you'll be able to increase the economy by four percent um per year per year how will you do this as president well reforming the tax code simplifying it lowering taxes eliminating all the loopholes and deductions and carve outs our tax code is like yay thick you have to have a lobbyist an accountant and a lawyer to be able to figure it all out simplifying the code would according to estimates would probably increase the uh, economy by one percent per year simplifying the rules the regulations moving them back to the states and making making sure there's an economic impact for any of the beneficial social benefits of rules uh, embracing the energy revolution that uh, creates lower cost energy that allows us to reindustrialize the country. Bringing, fixing immigration, so it's, a, it's a, not a drain on our society, but a, an economic benefit. Imagine an immigration system where we, we get to pick and choose who comes. People that can invest and people that can create and that can create opportunities for others. And, and then finally, we have to bring our fiscal house in order. You, you guys are in a heap of trouble unless we start dealing with these structural budget deficits. High growth is going to help in that regard because it lessens the demands on government, but our entitlement sy system, Medicare, Obamacare, Medicaid, and Social Security, all of those need to be reformed to reflect the changing demographics of our country. If we do all those things, we could grow at 4%. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thanks for